Universal Studios once again invites families to take a trip down the yellow brick road and hopefully avoid a person hanging in the background this time. That was a myth. Or that's what they want you to believe. Regardless, this isn't the same story your great grandma told you about. No, 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 no. This movie is darker. It's more sinister. It's more... wild. That would have been the perfect opportunity to say wi- This is going to be a spoiler-free review, and if you find yourself enjoying the commentary, feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell, as I am going to go into a spoiler video to follow this one after reviewing Gladiator, of course. Wicked is an easy breezy two and a half hours long, it's a part one, and you better believe there's going to be a chunk of the audience that has no idea that's the case, leaving a little bit frustrated. The film is PG, for music and whimsy. As far as ages go, this is a pretty safe, harmless affair, unless your family gets creeped out by flamboyancy, pageantry, men dancing. For me, being a straight, white, middle-aged man who's clearly the target demo for this film, I have to say I went into this with very low expectations. In fact, I almost kind of went in kicking and screaming, but my 15-year-old daughter really wanted to check it out. She was very pumped. But a fun quality about me is I have the ability to let a movie speak for itself. Sure, I might not be excited going in, but I want to be changed. I want to be wowed by what I'm watching, and I have to say this about Wicked. It did wow me. It did excite me. I was engaged, and I'm excited for part two. Now, the movie has its problems, like all films do, pretty much, except for <laughs> Jurassic Park. It's perfect! And don't give me some crap about a little girl being able to hack into the mainframe and open doors and blah, blah, blah. It's fine. She was smart with computers, okay? Let's focus on Wicked. The director from the hit film G.I. Joe Retaliation is back. And he's focusing on another musical called Wicked, featuring Ariana Grande and Cynthia Erivo. Ariana Grande plays the chipper, beautiful, fake as hell Glinda, sometimes just known as Glinda, depending on where you're at in the movie. Cynthia plays her counterpart, Alphabet, sometimes shortened to Alphaba. In fact, it's always shortened to Alphaba. Alphabet's something I just said for no reason. They're both really good in this movie. There's a solid supporting cast, too. You got Michelle Yu, you got Jeff Goldblum, there's a few others. But really, it's resting on the shoulders of these two young ladies. I actually don't know how old Ariana Grande is. She perpetually looks like she's 18. As I stated earlier, I went into this not really feeling the vibe of the whole thing. I'm not against musicals. I love La La Land. I think it's a fantastic film. I'm even a sucker for Grease. You throw that on, I'm dancing along with it. It's Grease Lightning! But a Wizard of Oz spinoff based on a book, based on a Broadway musical, I think it's pulling from each. I don't know, that was a tough sell. But I ended up purchasing, and I am a satisfied customer. My daughter absolutely floored by it as well. She has a review going up on her channel, Being Real with Olivia. Real, R-E-E-L. <laughs> we're clever like that. Since this is a part one, we're going to get a lot of buildup of characters with absolutely zero payoff at all. That's always a fun time. I always love that. Uh, no, that's not great. But I was actually interested in this storyline and even some of the subplots and how they're going to play out in the future. To keep things very light without giving away spoilers, Alphabet Soup is going to be the focus of this thing. We're going to see her as a youngling growing up and actually attending a very, very prestigious college, a university, if you will. Jizz University. Okay, uh, it's, it's Shiz University. <laughs> that was my mistake. Thanks, Sheila. You can show yourself out. You're fired. Shiz is... It's the shiz. It's the place to be. Not only do they have human professors, they have freaking goats teaching classes. This is like some Harry Potter shit on acid. What's funny about this to me, though, is when She-Hulk shows up, Alphabet, people are freaking out by her appearance. Oh my god, she's green, says the goose that can talk. Like, is this really that out there, folks? You have professor bears and stuff. There, there's talking rabbits and other creatures, and you're freaking out about a woman who's green. That's too far. That's crossing the line. I just found that a little funny is all. But that's one of the many themes in this movie. Acceptance. Being happy with who you are. Showing others that you are on equal footing as they are. Possibly even better in the case of Elphaba. Because she happens to have a very special ability. An ability she's not sure how to control. It's telekinesis, Kyle. She can move things with the power of her mind. 
I mean, kind of, she can't really control it. She has a bit of a rage issue. And this tends to be the time when things go awry. Not helping matters is Galinda being an absolute pile of crap. But maybe that will change over the course of a two and a half hour film. <laughs> You'll have to check it out to find out. Unless you know because you've been following Wicked for many years. It's probably uh, comes as no surprise. But I will say there are some surprises in store. There were some things I wasn't expecting. Some reveals made where I thought, oh, that's fun, that's clever. And a lot of things left to the mystery. But many of which I'm pretty sure I have figured out already because they're pretty obvious. Unless it's more clever than I thought and they're going to pull me for a loop. But we'll get into that in the spoiler video. This is very musically heavy. I mean, it is a musical after all, even though it's really not saying it is in the trailers. It is. I found most of the songs to be... Really good, pleasant, some of them fantastic. I wasn't going full-blown Elsa screaming out, let it go during any of the musical numbers. We don't have any, do you want to build a snowman basic shit? These all have a little bit more depth and layer to them, a little bit more nuance. Although it does the thing that modern musicals do that kind of makes me roll my eyes hard, where it's clearly setting up to rhyme one word with the previous, and then it doesn't just because it has to subvert the expectations but it always breaks up the flow of the song. I'm singing here, and now I'm singing somewhere else that I don't know about. <laughs> like it just it just completely breaks the flow. It gets annoying after a while because you're like, you're on board with it. Like, ha 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 ha. Oh, we're, we're done singing now? Oh, we're singing again now? Okay, holy crap, I can't keep up. And you can't have a cinematic movie experience with music without having some wonderful choreography and some beautifully framed shots. And in this instance, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Confusingly so. <laughs> right now I'm rhyming accidentally. This director has a hard on for backlights, soft overexposed backlights that drown out the foreground. There isn't an equal temperature going on. And so there's a lot of moments in this movie, not one or two, there's a good amount where there's these strong light sources from the background that are overpowering the front to, to the point where they're almost silhouettes. It frustrated me because there is a lot of good looking stuff in this movie too, but during these dance numbers especially, I was a little bummed out that we didn't frame them up better and we didn't light the sources better. And even taking this a step further, it's almost like the director goes out of his way not to do what's expected and not have these nicely framed wide shots where we see these characters performing and we get these vistas and these locations really locked in. Instead, the camera's free flowing all over the place, going under legs, jumping over people. And while that stuff is fun and it really brings you into it, I still would have liked more of those traditional shots so I could see all the months of choreography training that these guys went through. Now, of course, there's people online already calling this film a masterpiece. That is, I think, really ridiculous. I don't see it as a masterpiece, just based on what I told you about the visuals. Cinematography-wise, this isn't that great. In fact, I think the direction of the movie is the weakest part. The set design, the acting, the dance numbers, the music, that's all propping up. The, the movie succeeds because all the other pieces have come together so well. And so I guess, you know, from that aspect, the director did a great job corralling all of this up. But when it came to just framing things and lighting it, uh, I think he missed the mark. Overall impressions though are positive. I found the two and a half hours to fly by. There was maybe one moment in the movie that lasted 10 minutes where I, I thought, okay, can we move past this subplot that I know is not gonna go anywhere anyways right now and just move on to the main stuff again? That was it though. Just a, just a small little pebble in the ripple of time and then we're back to the main stuff and it was all good. Ariana Grande, I think, carried this film. She is funny as crap. I love her little mousy voice that she has. A lot of great physical acting and comedy coming from her. And that's not a knock on anyone else. Cynthia absolutely held her own here. Great protagonist. Unfortunately, she's just your standard kind of goody two-shoes, more on the boring side of things, where Ariana Grande gets to play the fun mean girl who comes off as lovable to everybody, but she's saying a ton of underhanded comments, which I thought was fantastic. And man, can these two sing. Really giving shades of myself when I'm in the shower. So it's coming off just the same. 
in my own mind. All right, as I stated, I'm gonna have a very fun spoiler video to follow this probably in a couple days. Make sure to subscribe to hear that. It's gonna be a fun time. If you haven't already, hit the notification bell so these show up in your feed. I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. It's the best way to support the channel unless you want to give a super thanks right under this video. That's a possibility, at least on YouTube. And hopefully I see you next time, which will surely be for the Gladiator 2 review. All right, take care.